Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 8.1 in the Atlas tutorial series. Today we're going to be turning our attention to the camera object. Uh, every world you create has by default the ground, the light, and the camera. And thus far we haven't done a whole lot with the camera aside from simply move it to set up static scenes. Now we've done some animations, but th the camera itself works as any other object does in Atlas in that we can give it all the same methods. Move it, turn it, and kind of shape it to what we want. This allows you to create some more advanced animations in that you can change the angles of scenes and the point of view of the camera and maybe get some zooming in and some panning and you get some really neat things going on. So all of the lesson eight, uh, in the, all of 8.1, 8.2 and so on will deal specifically with how to operate the camera and get some neat effects out of the camera object. Lesson 8.1 is going to focus on simply panning the camera and moving the camera to get a better shot at your scene. So let's go ahead and get started with Lesson 8.1 on adjusting the camera for your scene. So I've got a new Alice World open here, and in order to play around with the camera, what we really need to do is have a scene already set up. Uh, one of the scenes that I had in mind, we've already done earlier, uh, I think it was in Lesson 6, maybe 6.1, maybe a little bit before that, but I really like the animation where we had the high-resolution moon orbiting around the Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate that scene so that we can do some neat camera tricks with that scene. Since you've already seen uh, those particular lessons, and since those have already been implemented, we're just going to time-lapse our way through the creation of that world and get started when it's all set up. So here we go, we have our scene set up, and this is very similar to an earlier challenge program that we did, but it's it's simply the Earth rotating and the Moon orbiting the Earth. And I don't know if the astronomical properties of this are correct, uh, Earth could be rotating the wrong direction, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know. But we have a good scene here that we can start to add depth to by moving the camera in our animation as well. Now in the code here, I have the moon making one revolution and I have the earth making one revolution and the entire animation takes a total of 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and move the starting position of the camera so that the earth is roughly in the bottom right hand quadrant. Now as this animation runs, I want the camera to sort of pan down and to the right. I'm going to select the camera as an object and in my do together statement so that it moves at the same time as the moon and the earth I'm gonna take the camera and give it a command to move down and we'll just try on error 5 meters right now over a duration of 30 seconds so that it matches the rest of the animation. As this runs my goal is that the earth will be roughly in the top of the screen when the moon has made one complete revolution. So it looks like this distance might be too great since the camera is going to be out of the scene here pretty soon or the earth is going to move out of the scene. So let's go ahead and adjust this and 
kick it down to let's say two meters and see if two meters works. We'll run this again. And it definitely looks like two meters is working out better than five meters did. Yeah, two meters looks like it'll be about right. So the distance uh, from top to bottom looks like it will be okay for this animation. We also want the camera to move to the right at the same time so we kind of get a diagonal moving effect. So we'll add another camera move command. This time we're going to tell the camera to move right. And let's see if two meters works for that as well. So the camera's going to move right two meters over a duration of 30 seconds. We'll hit play. And now we have a slow panning camera for our animation and it just it adds some character to the animation that we didn't have before. All of our animations had a static camera and there's definitely a time and place for the static camera, but this is going to give us a, uh, a slow moving effect. Gosh, I, I think it still might be moving down just a little bit far, but the two meters looks okay, so let's go ahead and change the move down command to a little bit shorter. We'll call this 1.5 meters. But we're adding depth, character, and some uh, uniqueness to the animations that we're creating by moving the camera just slightly. All of the same methods that you use on all the other objects, move, turn, roll, that all works with the camera as well. In fact, let's add just a little bit more uh, to our scene. We're going to roll the camera. So let's just right now right click on the camera select roll and we're going to roll the camera left by um, let's call it 0.05 revolutions and just give the camera a little bit of a tilt now one thing that happened here you can see my background uh, is now out of the scene so let's go into our um, object edition screen and make the background just a little bit bigger so that it still encompasses the whole screen when our camera is tilted. And I'm going to add a camera roll command. Let's roll the camera to the right by 0.1 meters. So what we'll be doing is adding a, a little bit of a tilt so that it will start lean to the left and then eventually end up about the same degree tilt to the right. We're going to do this over the 30 seconds. Let's see how this looks right here. So we hit play, the camera's going to move, and at the same time, it's going to tilt to the right. And that kind of gives it more of a, a spacey feel to it. So all these little tweaks are just adding character to our animation and making it seem more lifelike, more vivid, maybe a little bit more realistic. And, you know, like I said, all the commands that we've used before are completely usable. And when we end our animation, maybe we even want to get a, a zoom in on the uh, moon. One of the things that you get with the camera that you don't get with some of the other um, objects and their methods, if you have the camera selected, you'll, you'll have a get a good look at method that you can run. And this will zoom the camera in pretty closely to uh, the object that you select. So after the animation is done running, let's tell the camera to get a good look at the moon. And we'll do this as a duration of let's call it about 20 seconds. So after the animation is done running, the camera should automatically pan to zoom in and get a pretty good full screen shot of the moon. Now, if we don't like where the camera ends up, we can still use uh, point to, turn to face, uh, move towards, and those kind of commands to make the camera end up where we want. But I think we'll get a pretty good zoomed in shot of the moon with get a good look at. So the animation is just about done running. And now our camera will start to zoom in at the moon. And it definitely isn't quite taking the path that I would like. It's pointing at the bottom of the earth and our star's background is, is kind of cut out of the scene here. But in the end, we are getting a zoomed up copy of the moon, 
So that might be uh, another editing technique that you can use to add character to your animations. Now, if I were going to complete this animation completely, what I might want to do is add some more stars backgrounds and create almost a, a box around the scene so that when it pans and starts looking down, you've got a flat billboard with stars underneath the earth and then place another one on the right hand side. But you, you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. You can adjust the camera as you do any other object and you can move it to get zoom, zoom in on particular objects and, and things like that. So that should do just for basic camera movements. Now we will get into uh, dummy cameras and multiple cameras and things like that in upcoming lessons, but that should be a good start right here. Let's take a look at the Lesson 8.1 Challenge Program. Your lesson 8.1 challenge program, now that you know how to pan the camera, is to create a sort of car commercial. I've used the convertible from the gallery and the concert stage from the environment gallery and created I don't know, what I imagine to be like either a car show or a car commercial where we've got a slow panning camera showing off this, this high powered automobile. Your job is to select a vehicle from the vehicle's gallery and then put it on a stage, somehow make it the center of the scene. Use a panning camera to create a scene that you imagine you would see in a commercial for that vehicle. Kind of like what I've done right here. Now to add some style to my commercial, I also used a circle object. You can see that blue circle. Uh, I've used the circle object from the uh, objects gallery or I, I Think, or the shapes gallery, that's what it is. So I've, I put the uh, circle shape on the concert stage and then rotated that uh, roughly half in a half circle throughout the course of the animation. And I set the car to have a vehicle of that circle so that while the circle was turning, the car was resting on top of it. So you can use your imagination to come up with a cool scene. But ultimately, your job is to create a neat and intriguing car commercial using a panning camera like we talked about in this lesson. As always, if you have any questions, are unable to get something working, or need help with any of your animations in Alice, uh, leave those in the comments and I will certainly get to them and help you out any way that I can. Until next time, thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and have a great day.